Hi all and welcome to my Proving Grounds Endless Damage Survival Hunter Guide. I flasked for agility and eight for agility for this, maximum as much as you can, so 300. Uh, the talents I took were post haste, this is relatively good for mobility. Binding shot, which is excellent for trapping the tosses. Spirit Bond, which really doesn't matter. Fervor, which I found incredibly useful for those oh no I'm gonna run out of time moments. Blink Strikes, because it's just easy for your pet to get around quicker. Murder of Crows has too long of a cooldown. Glaive Toss, because it's the most optimal DPS. I took Glyph of No Escape, and Glyph of Liberation, which really, No Escape is probably the most important one. So you want them to be using your Ice Trap as much as you possibly can. So to begin with, you've got wave 1 here, which is the three amber weavers and the little vermin in the middle. I put my traps in the middle and AoE'd, and then I serpent stung all of the amber weavers, putting on my uh, black arrow onto one of them, and leaving that until last to maximize my procs of lock and load. Um, I kited most of the amber, you really don't need to use it too much here, I mean I was finishing this wave constantly with uh, with about 30 odd seconds left, so there was really no need for me to, I guess, uh, use those ambers. Uh, but I took the time that I had to set up for wave 2, which involves a mystic, which is a healer, two guardians, and a amber weaver. So the way you're going to want to set it up is it is the, the uh, mystic will spawn on the back corner, so to speak where the little um, gold arrow things are, I guess, across from the doorway. I set my traps down, I put my black arrow on the furthest guardian from me, and then I focus down the mystic. Once the mystic was dead, or nearly dead, obviously with interrupting his heal, I was using the amber on this first guardian and DPSing it down. If you are quick, you can start running to the next one and uh, get in position making sure to dot up the Amber Weaver as best as you can. Basically, a rule of thumb here is to have Serpent Sting on as much as you can whenever you can. Then I would finish off this Amber Weaver and kite the Banshee into its remaining Amber Globule, just to kill it quickly. I mean, you don't really have to, but it helps. Then once again, I would lay all of my traps down in the middle in preparation for Wave 3. And when I had less than 10 seconds left, I would throw down Binding Shot in preparation for the two tosses that spawn. This group is probably the most fun just because it's massive AoE. Um, you can put your Black Arrow on one of those tosses just for DPS. None of, neither of them are going to live for the full duration of it, but I mean, it's just a little bit of extra DPS. You're going to want to kite and run whenever a tosser is out if you don't kill them before they start moving and come out of their stun just because they uh, do a debuff on you that uh, reduces your chance to hit. Then just finish off the remaining vermin and you will have a lot of time left at the end of this wave. So once again, with the time I had left, I would prepare for the next coming wave, wave 4, which involves 4 guardians on each corner or point, and 1 amber weaver in the middle. So. I would, I basically made myself a rule, I would put my traps on one, I would black arrow the one directly across from me, and serpent sting the other, uh, and then kind of go back and put serpent sting on everything, including the amber weaver, and I would put my frost trap on the one I was going to DPS first to burn it down as quickly as possible. Now in the earlier waves, like wave 4 and 14, I was actually able to kill that guardian without, uh, without actually using the amber, but for, these, for this wave in particular, I wasn't able to do that and I had to make use of it. Then I just went around uh, clockwise to each guardian and DPSed it down, keeping my dots up as much as I can and refreshing them whenever the shields were down. Now another thing you're going to want to be mindful of on wave 4 is that a banshee spawns. Uh, you can make a macro to target it, I didn't bother, um, but you're going to want to DPS that one down regardless of what's going on around you just because those timers can ruin you. Then just once again use the ambers to finish off these guys, hot them up, or dot them up even, and just uh, burn those down. Wave 5 begins with a Shah and a Mystic and a Tosser. 
Uh, once you learn where they are, you can preemptively put your binding shot down, then you're going to want to interrupt the mystic, burn that mystic, uh, that tosser down, then kill the mystic, and dot up the shower as much as possible, even though it has its damage reduction shield up until uh, about 20 seconds. You want to keep DPSing it down because it will still take an amount of damage. Now, as you can see, obviously I'm not hitting it very hard, about what, 9k there for a crit, but it is damage on it, and if you've got nothing else to do, then why not? Uh, Banshee spawns, just kill it, wait for the timer to reach 20 seconds, and then just burn down the, uh, the shark. Now, I kept rapid fire for this particular wave, just because I wasn't sure if I would make it otherwise. Um, but in, again, in the earlier waves, I didn't need it. But for this last one, I decided not to take the risk and just went for it. Now, wave six spawns two mystics. I chose to trap one and interrupt the other, um, and then just AOE down the vermin in the middle. You're going to want to interrupt the heal, obviously, although. If it does get off and the vermin are low, it's only going to heal the vermin, which is the point of burning them down as best as you can beforehand. Once the uh, once one mystic is dead, you can move on to the other. Um, as you can see there, it did just heal the vermin, which was really no big deal to me, because they can just be kind of dotted down by your traps and by serpent sting while you focus down the mystic. Um, but its second heal you will be able to interrupt. Don't forget about Fervor at this point either, or at any point, you don't even want to try and use it on cooldown, or when you expect to need a lot more burst, I suppose. Um, a little bit of an oh no man. This wave was one of the ones I found the hardest. I tried my best to dot up as much as I could before focusing down that tosser, and interrupting the Amber Weaver closest to me, so I only had to deal with one globule at a time because it was just going to get too messy for me otherwise. You want to be mindful of those Berserker buffs because you want to save them for waves 9 and 10. So just watch that you don't stand on those. And again, the same tactic applies to this uh, this wave in that you want to dot up as much as possible. Um, I threw Black Arrow kind of between the Amber Weaver and the Higher Guardian. Um, and make use of those globules as best as you possibly can while DPSing on the run and positioning yourself. If you do find yourself in risk of getting hit by the um, by the globules, you can pop deterrence before it hits you, but there's uh, it, it will not break you out of the stun effect. So, I mean, you can pop it and make just a cancel aura, but other than that, you've just got to be careful. This wave I struggled on quite a lot. Uh, in that I had to try and dot up, uh, I put Black Arrow on one of the Slayers, Serpent Stung the other, and tried to burn the Absolute out of that Mystic. Now, three Banshees spawn on this wave. Uh, one, This first one spawns relatively early, and you should have time to burn it down and get that Mystic nice and low. Then finish off the Mystic and keep dots on the Slayers. You absolutely have to. Then you can move on to the next Banshee, and then a second one will spawn very close to it. Make sure you focus on the first one that spawns, or the first one you attack with perfectly, that's the first one that spawns, because those timers do get a little bit scary. Then make sure you're keeping your dots up, your traps, your anythings on these slayers to get them as low as possible while you've got uh, enough time, because as you can see, the timer does get very tight right there. Wave 9 isn't too difficult, you can throw your Binding Shot down. I chose to pick up the Berserker debuff uh, at the very beginning, just so I could get that uh, Tosser down and then work on the Slayers. I line of sighted myself behind the Guardian to let it soak up the Globules and I would throw Serpent Sting on it and try and Serpent Sting the Weaver as well while I burnt down those two Slayers. Once the Slayers were dead, I moved on to my Guardian little shield here, um, but be mindful that a Banshee does spawn. There is a fairly high chance that it will actually get hit by one of the Globules and be really, really easy to kill, but in the event that it doesn't, don't stress, they don't have that much life, you just need to be mindful that they are going to spawn. Once everything on this wave is dead, get next to your uh, Berserker debuff or Berserker buff over there and throw your traps down in the middle in uh, preparation for the final wave, which is simply a large illusionary shark. 
You're going to want to, once again, DPS it as much as you possibly can uh, before its shield comes down, as well as when its shield does come down. But save your cooldowns for when the shield comes down. I made a bit of an oops and didn't have rapid fire up on this particular wave, which scared me a little bit, but I did make it with two seconds to spare, as you will see. But other than that, this wave is really straightforward. When the timer reaches 30 seconds, pick up your Berserker debuff because or your Berserker buff, sorry, because it will last 30 seconds. So you want it up for the rest of the wave for as much as possible. Make sure you're putting your traps down, making use of that free lock and load proc from uh, Glyph of No Escape or your Ice Trap, and pop your Stampede when the shield comes down. And just try and burn him as much as possible, and then congratulations you have your uh, Proven Assailant title. Thank you for watching, and uh, please stay tuned for more.